All right, in this video, let's talk about... I, I don't even know what to talk about. I need to talk about how these three hermits run across the water at the end. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> <laughs> How to picture in your head? That's all I want to know, and then we can end the video. <laughs> I pictured it almost like like an anime character, like running really, really fast with like the water like squirting out behind them. They look so determined as they did it. It was, <laughs> it was so fantastic. Oh, all right, so good. welcome to the Codex Cantina, where I am Una and I am Anime Crypto. <laughs> now today we are going to be covering The Three Hermits by Leo Tolstoy. I'm going to be working off of the Everyman's Library collection that I have here. We go into heavy, heavy detail analyzing the short story. So if you are down for that sort of discussion and literary breakdown, please consider subscribing. So The Three Hermits is a short story written by our boy Leo Tolstoy. This story can be read for free. We'll put the link down in the description below. And you can also just look for it on uh, YouTube and you can get it read to you, which I did and I'll talk about. But it was written by Tolstoy in 1885 and published in 1886 in that, you know, post uh, era of his religious, you know, his crisis that he had. So in terms of themes for this story, we, we obviously have the prayer. It's, it's the epigraph to the story where it's what's the right way to pray. We have teaching values. Can you teach someone to be a good person? First, teaching them the method to be a good person. And we're going to have to talk about the Russian Orthodox Church and the Tolstoyan movement, which is so critical for the story, because even if you got those first two points, it's like, okay, like writing a story about praying, it's not going to be a very literary story. This is this is a story that's well known. Why is it literary? It's this this context of the Russian Orthodox Church that, that we really need to dive into today to really understand. I feel like that is the whole point of this story. And if you miss it, you need to reread the story. All right, so let's do a quick plot breakdown, and then we'll do our analysis. So in terms of plot, a bishop and some pilgrims are traveling on a ship to the Solovetsky Monastery. The bishop overhears a fisherman, <laughs> how religious Tolstoy, <laughs> talking about a mysterious island that has three hermits on it. Oh, Tolstoy, you and your religious symbols. The bishop hears <laughs> that they have dedicated themselves to God. He decides to check it out and pay wages and fees to detour to this island. The bishop gets to his rowboat, and he makes the journey to the island by himself. Then he asks them, how do they pray? He corrects them and shows them the biblical way as shown in the Bible. And later he leaves, and as the ship sails away, the three hermits are sprinting across the water towards the ship to tell them that they've forgotten how to pray. And that's when the bishop realizes that he's the sinner, apologizes, and tells them that they're doing great. End story. <laughs> so good so good it's really short you got to go read it because we're we're, we're butchering it because it, it's hilarious because it's really good so now this is very interesting like we said the more you get to know tolstoy but just to touch on that real real quick the opening epigraph we have a quote from harold fowler who's a specialist on, on the book of matthew he says that he feels that while prayer is not useful to god it is useful to humans if we do not have to toil through continuous prayer before receiving God's grace, we will grow soft. So the idea is that while we pray, God already knows what we're going to say from a religious biblical view. He knows what's in your heart. And the bishop asks in the story, but how do you pray to God? Asked the bishop. We pray in this way, replied the hermit. Three are ye, three are we, have mercy on us. Which is actually a really funny twist on a prayer. Do you know which prayer that is? The... No. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of funny the way that the bishop, I will teach you not a way of my own, but the way in which God in the Holy Scriptures has commanded all men to pray. So he's saying, you're not praying the right way, right? You've got to pray via this practice. This dogmatic practice, practice is the way to pray correctly. Yeah, it te he teaches them the Lord's Prayer, uh, but the Bible itself is almost contradicting itself because— you have a quote of scripture that says otherwise, right? No, I mean, from Matthew 6, 9, it says pray on this way. But Matthew 7, 8 says, And in praying, use not vain repetitions, as the Gentiles do, for they think that they shall be heard for the teaching speaking. Be not therefore unto them, for your father knowing what you have need of, be ask him. Depending on your worldview, I'm not going to say that's, I'm not going to say that's contradictory. I'm going to say that's clarifying that God already knows what the prayers are going to be. Right. If you are praying correctly, what that second part is saying is that you're praying from your heart and God knows what's already in your heart. Yeah, I guess I was just taking more of the front of the verse of that not to do repetition and 
that is repetition. I know that when I was in, you know, Catholic school, it was at the beginning of every single class, we put our hands together, knelt our heads and said, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come and did the whole thing every single time. And that repetition, it loses its meaning because you're just doing it out of repetition. You don't think about it. You don't have any, you don't, you don't think about it. You don't have any heart behind it. There, there's no value right. to it in a spiritual right. sense. Right. If you're just doing it in the dogmatic exercise, it's not achieving its goal. You have yes, to put exactly. your you have to put your heart and spirit behind the prayer. That's what makes it a real prayer because God already knows what you're going to say. You have to actually feel and believe it in order for it to be real according to Scripture. Yeah, and I think that's why this story is so good and so important. I want to go a little bit further for the Tolstoyan movement. Right. So we covered that in our last talk about Ayusha the Pot, where from the Wikipedia, we have the Tolstoyans identify themselves as Christians, but do not generally belong to an institutional church. Tolstoy was a harsh critic of the Russian Orthodox Church, leading to his excommunication in 1901. Tolstoyans tend to focus more on following the teachings of Jesus rather than the miracles or divinity. And actually, it's kind of interesting having just had that talk here tonight about these sirens of Titan and the Jefferson Bible and got me thinking even a bit further on this part. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's kind of interesting to talk about, well, we're not going to focus on the miracles. We're going to focus on Jesus' teachings. We're not going to focus on the dogmatic practices. We're going to talk about what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, I feel like that they're taking some of the the magic out of it and just focusing in on the morals of the story. So I think what's interesting... I love this part. You know how like sometimes I get those little, hmm, I wonder what happened if I look into this? <laughs> oh, you went down the rabbit hole, didn't uh, you? <laughs> I, I, okay, come, come, come down with me, baby. Come down the rabbit hole. <laughs> All right, so, I'm following. You know I am. <laughs> so I'm going to put up a map on the screen. So they talk about going from Archangel, which is a, a city in Russia, to the Solovetsky Monastery. So I'm going to put that up on the screen here. Okay. Is it really called Archangel? Archangel-esque. I'm not sure how to pronounce it exactly, but but yeah, that, okay. that is a city name. That's like one of the translations. That's a really of cool it. name. Cool. Yeah. So, well, at first I was curious if it meant archangel, as in you know the actual angels from the Bible. Yeah, but that's, that's immediately but, what I thought. The, so I started going down that rabbit hole. And that's when I found the real city, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's a fisherman that points out to the hermit, and you'll notice that he Tolstoy specifically. It wasn't like there's the island. Okay, there it is. The bishop had a hard time seeing the island, did he not? Yeah, right. Yeah, he couldn't see it till they got right up on it. Where is the island, asked the bishop. I see nothing. Probably in the same way that he doesn't really see the point of prayers. Ooh, that's good. It's the idea that he's going through the process of looking, but he's not going through the process of seeing. And why could that be? So another way to look at this is the man is looking off in the direction, but he needs to turn to the right to see it. Okay. So interestingly enough, this, this is my inclination, and I hit bullseye on this one, just in terms of the rabbit hole. If we're going <laughs> towards Solovetsky Monastery, right, and he's looking to the left and needs to turn to the right, guess where to the left is on this map? It's looking right at Moscow, as I expected, which was the cultural and spiritual heart of the Russian Orthodox Church at the time. So the bishop representative of the dogmatic practices of the Russian Orthodox Church is busy looking to the left at Moscow, the Russian Orthodox dogmatic practice capital, (laughs) on this trip and can't see the three hermits who are representative of the Tolstoyan movement who don't worry about the practices and instead just focus on the teachings of Jesus. Oh, hot damn, man. Geography analysis (laughs) in the Codex Cantina. That's a first for us, I think. (laughs) Ooh, I just got goosebumps. (laughs) So so the fisherman tells them how they had been stranded there on this island, the three hermits, right? And how how that they had come out and helped him, right, in terms of flipping over the boat with their their gargantuan strength. (laughs) But we have a little bit of the three questions here, if you remember that story, right? What's the most important three things to do as a Christian? Help people. The most important person to do something to is the person in front of you. The most important thing to do is to help them. And the most important thing to do it is right now. 
now. Right, that's that's the three yeah. questions Tolstoyan movement of help your neighbor right now as opposed to putting things off. Yeah, okay. So what did you think about the story being called Three Hermits, right? It's not called the bishop on the way to Solovetsky Monastery. <laughs> so here I, I cheated a little bit in the first time, as I said at the top of the video, is that I listened to it and I got a really good vibe from the reader. And then I went back and read it myself and I found myself doing it in his context. That's not the right word. Um... Syntax. The, the, the rhythm, the pace. No, like when you would, you know, how many uh, uh, breaks a word has. Yeah, like how many, like, like the beats per meter and stuff like that. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Rhythm. Yeah, so I, I really got this rhythm stuck in my head from the reader that did it because he had this, like, vibe going for me. And so when I read it myself the second time, that really stuck with me. So I started looking for threes everywhere throughout this story. And so right off the bat, all right, three hermits, what does it mean? I'm really going to look for this three here. And I having this vibe from the reader, I'm looking for threes, and it's three old men. And there's three stories about the old men. And then they're asked, you know, how they pray. And I got this quote that you said as well, uh, we pray this way, three are thee, three are we, have mercy on us. And it's threes again. Yeah, we're, we're using the structure of the Bible in a spiritual number to tell the story, right? Yeah, and then at the end of the story, we get the same thing. Uh, you know, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's super hermits. <laughs> 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 no, the real quote from the story is, it's not a boat or a bird or a fish. And so it's you get that that triplicate again. And I really think that this device that he's using is trying to reflect the Holy Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or, or Holy Ghost, uh, of the Orthodox Church. And I think to myself, why is he doing this? And I think that he wants to draw your attention to this on purpose so that you can look the right direction. Ah, see what I did there? <laughs> that you don't have to have a relationship with the church and that in nature, you can just make the connection with God yourself. And he's ensuring that the reader is seeing that. Right. It's because you don't need the dogmatic practices of the church. You need God and you need God's teachings. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I think that the, the three hermits represent that because they have no clue about the Lord's prayer. They learn it, they forget it, and then they perform miracle walking on water like Jesus did to be like, hey, we, we, made it, we, we, don't, we don't know it. We need to know it. And the dude's like, uh, you don't need to know it. You guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that part cracks oh. me up. You know, yeah, I, it, it, I, did you... Okay, so this is a bit of a stretch, but did you take... Because you'll notice that he gave them each a backstory, right? And in a short story, particularly from Tolstoy, every single thing has a meaning. Did you take much from the backstories of them? Well, they had three different jobs, right? And it was almost like one could listen, one could talk, and one was mute. And it was like the 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 monkeys, you know, the little monkeys, like the one oh, has... See this. no evil, hear no evil, speak no and evil. That's what I kind of took it of, is like each one kind of represented, was supposed to be like representing a sin, and then the story twists, and you're like, whoa, the bishop guy who's supposed to be the religious good one is the sinner, and who you thought was going to be the sinner are the good ones, is how I kind of took it. Okay. Okay. I I, I wonder, I, I don't think I have the answer to this, but I wonder if there are specific Bible passages that these are references to. Uh, we had, like, the short man with the bent back, and, of course, we know about the miracle with Jesus with the man with the bent back where he healed the man. Uh, who, who had the cursed bent back by Satan, so to speak, on the Sabbath. And they're like, hey, what are you doing working on the Sabbath? Like, that that's a very specific story. And I didn't know if that was a reference to that. We had the strong man who was bound to steal his plunders. Uh, part of the house divided speech, if you remember that from the Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's that, that talk about how Satan, you know, casting out Satan, basically. And it's kind of reminiscent of the Russian Orthodox Church and the Tolstoyan movement kind of casting out, basically, the dogmatic practices here. I don't know if that was what he was going. Yeah. I don't know if that's what he's going for, but we also had the third man with nothing but a cloth around his waist, which is kind of very Jeremiah of Jeremiah thirteen, which is where you wear this around the the, the your waist, you know, and the, the covenant of God is basically is, is you won't, you shouldn't get that wet, right? And at the same time, when they ran across the, the water at the end, they didn't get wet. <laughs> I didn't. That's what just popped into my head. I'm not hundred percent sure that's what he was going for, but I did take. The interpretation, like when, when Tolstoy puts something in a short story, which everything is very focused on a six, seven page short story, 
I imagine that there is some very specific references he's making there with those. And that's kind of where I, my mind just initially went to for them. Yeah, definitely. And if all three men are representing stories of miracles of Jesus, and then they all do the exact same miracle again right. that right. Jesus performed, walking on water, I could see that connection that all three are kind of being Jesus-like figures. Well, and this, this shows the bishop that he was wrong, that these men really are holy. They are, God knows them. Right. He, they don't need to pray to God in a specific way because God already knows them. He already knows how holy and how they dedicated their lives to them. They're helping those around them. They're helping them immediately, helping the person closest to them. We see so much of Tolstoy in these characters that it's really fascinating for such a, a, a hilarious ending. I, I don't know how to best describe yeah. that as. <laughs> I feel here that Tolstoy is obviously projecting, but he's also saying that the church is wrong and it's what can corrupt your relationship with God because the, the the hermits had this relationship. They were fine. The bishop comes in and, and breaks them almost and they're paranoid that they're doing it wrong and they're going to be punished as a result. And kind of that, you know, fire, hell and brimstone that the church preaches, you know, the Orthodox church preaches to the people of Russia And Tolstoy is saying, no, look, you know, you don't have to go running to the church for the answers. You yourself can do this on your own. And And as as the, yeah. And to say that the church was wrong, like, (laughs) that's big. (laughs) It seems like someone can get excommunicated for doing things like that, right? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you're going to, you're going to get kicked off the island. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Let's, uh, let's. So we've, we've had a good discussion here with, with what the three means, kind of like with some of the, the ideas of the calling the church out, saying that they're wrong for their dogmatic practices in terms of the relationship with God, what Tolstoyan was, movement was all about. Uh, let's move into our subjective ratings now. So just in terms okay. of what you, we personally took away from the story, uh, what, what are you going to rate this? So from a analytical perspective, I think that you could easily give this 8.59, right? It, it, there's so much in such a short, short story, so good. Uh, from an enjoyment, I laughed out loud, and if you make me laugh, I've got to give you at least a 9. Uh, I think that Tolstoy knocked out of the park, so for both of my ratings, solid 9. Bam! So you're saying you're, uh, you're a peak rater. Is that what you're saying? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I also laughed out loud. I also said, analytically, this was great. It's very easy, very clear to understand what's happening here, particularly when you know what's going on with the Tolstoyan movement and his criticism of the Russian Orthodox, you know, Eastern Orthodox churches. I, I think it's very easy to to catch these things, and I still enjoyed it, nonetheless. I still laughed at the end. I think I'm going to go with an 8.5 for both as well. Cool. Good, good. Well, all right, guys, if you enjoy literature discussions and breakdowns like this, we encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can join us on the journey. We're going to be doing a bunch more Tolstoy. As we said, we're doing this with Noah from Everyone Who Reads It Must Converse as a part of the Tolstoy Triggered Project. So please check out his video on this as well. Check out David Murphy. We'll put his link down below, who talks about kind of the, the idea of praying correctly and does some great readings from the story as well. So thank you so much for checking this video out, guys. Una out. Peace.